What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Canyon Tune. Today we are working on the E46 again. Um, one thing I wanted to tackle aesthetics wise is these nasty headlight covers. And I actually found a set of headlight covers for like 50 bucks on Amazon. We'll see how they do. I do want to coat them in a little bit of like UV protection as well. Get some more life out of the new covers, but uh, figured too while I was at it, install some halo rings while the covers are off and you can access everything. So I had the same set of halo rings. They're just uh, a set of Amazon halo rings, but they look pretty good. Just standard white LEDs, nothing flashy or crazy. They look uh, pretty much like the OEM F82 halo rings and E90. Well, actually, no, the E90s have uh, have the orange ones, but I think it'll look pretty good with the silver. So I'm gonna show you guys how to take the headlight covers off and then some basic wiring for this. Uh, there is an option on these halos to, uh, you can tap into the footwell wiring and have it fade in and out, but I really don't like that feature. I don't think it looks that good. The fade in and out effect of the halo rings are kind of, I don't know, kind of chintzy. So figured just uh, have the on and off triggered by the headlights themselves. So nothing too complicated. The other thing this car needed was some new hood struts. Right now the hood doesn't even stay up for more than like 30 seconds without falling down. So if you guys have bad hood struts, I mean, these hood struts I think are like 15 bucks on <laughs> eBay. So it's worth spending a couple of minutes just to switch these out and then you don't have to prop up your hood like a big dummy. Cool, so now that the hood will actually stay up by itself, <laughs> which is a huge win, we can move on to taking the headlight covers off and getting to the spot where we can install the halos. There's, I believe, a screw right here that goes through the bodywork to actually take off the corner lights, and then we should be able to undo these tabs and take the headlight covers right off. So there's just the one Phillips head screw in the top, and then the corner lights can come out. Okay, and then this lower trim piece comes off there's a tab on this edge, and then there's a tab on kind of the middle on this side. And once you have the headlight or the corner light out, you can get to this little release tab here. Just be careful with it. Kind of wiggle it out slow because it is a plastic trim piece. All right, then this upper trim piece comes off. You have to lift up on the tabs on the back of it, and then this small piece comes off. And then there's these bigger tabs. I'm just slowly kind of lifting up and working the headlight off. All right, there it is. And this is actually a OEM Bosch part. You can see the part numbers and there's like a DOT stamp. So these are definitely the originals. You can see how faded they are pretty bad. I'm actually glad that the inside beam area is not faded as well. They actually look like they're in really, really good condition. I'm gonna take the other side off and kind of go from there. All right, here's our new headlight lens covers. Barely even see them on camera because they're so translucent and clear, but I'm actually going to spray a little bit of protective, uh, it's almost clear coat. It just helps protect these plastic covers from the UV sun, especially in Arizona here. I don't think these will last probably more than a year, but we'll see. I mean, they're cheap enough. I think they're like 30, 40 bucks. 
And then we have the iJDM Toy Lighting Halo Kit. And it looks like it comes with four halo rings. And then it has these error-free uh, resistors in there so you don't get any error codes. And then it looks like we have a wiring harness which each one of the individual halos plug into. And then of course our little ground here. And it looks like we've got two leads, a red and white one. The red one is gonna be to turn them on. And then this one is gonna be optional like I said, I'm not gonna be installing it, but that's for the fade in and out effect. So let's uh, let's first mount these halo rings up and then we're gonna feed these little leads through the back of the headlight and make sure we only cut like a little slit in the back of it so they're still watertight. But uh, yeah, it shouldn't be too bad. And then these little clips here I don't know if you can see. Yep, these little clips here will clip these onto this upper part of the. Uh, I'm gonna have to get this little shroud out, I think, but they mount up on the top there. Okay, so that was not very easy, and most of the videos I've seen online kind of skip over this part. So. There's only one way these clips are supposed to go on the top and there's ridges You'll see like little ridges on the top and then there's a flat part in the bottom of the clip That might be a little bit tough to see on camera But uh, essentially the little ridges have to go on the top and it can only go in one way or else the ring kind of sits up a little bit so you have to make sure these are in the right direction. So what you have to do to put the clips on is there's a little kind of insert area right here. You slide it on, pry it upwards, and then you have to slide it over. So if you if this is my finger is a clip, up into the middle, forward, and then slide it over to its desired position. Uh, and then you'll get it so it sits flat. Now, one thing to keep in mind is this is plastic on plastic and these clips don't really clamp all that great. So what I ended up doing on the inner part, so the high beams, was take the provided tape they give you and they want you to tape at the bottom part and I don't see how you would do that because there's like no surface area for that to stick. So what you wanna do, what I ended up doing was taking the tape and putting it, sticking it to the spots where the clips are gonna go on and allows it to stay snug. So if you were to brake really hard in the car, your halo ring is can just slide off. Um, the low beam is a little bit different. This actually has a ridge on the top of the actual headlight assembly itself and the clips kind of just clip into there and it's pretty secure. So it's really just the high beam one you have to worry about. Um, and I'm really hoping these little wires aren't gonna be showing, but I don't think so. All right, so the other thing to keep in mind is you have to feed those two wires through the back of the headlight. So there's a boot right here and you kind of just slide it past. And one thing that's kind of annoying when you're trying to feed it through is you can't get your hand in on this side. So you either need to take off the secondary air pump if you have one in E46 M3, or uh, what I ended up doing was just taking my long needle nose pliers, sticking them down in there into the actual headlight, and then you'll be able to see from the front this little kind of area, and you can feed the end of that plug through and put it in between your um, pliers there and then clamp down on it and pull that cord all the way through and you should be able to get it. Kind of a pain. And then on the driver's side, I just took the air box off and I was able to get to that a lot easier. So you're gonna feed those wires through, there's a little rubber grommet or boot and then uh, kind of go from there. But next step is to put the rest of the harness in and then there's a wire in the 
uh, DME box that I'm going to have to splice and that's going to be the power feed for the entire assembly. Okay, kind of struggled with the main wiring a little bit, but I ended up running my own uh, thicker gauge wire because the one provided was apparently not enough. So what I ended up doing was if you open up the DME box, there's a little wire here that's red with yellow stripes and a white stripe going down the whole thing. That's gonna be your accessory wire and you can tap into that uh, with the little blue taps provided. And then that just goes to that little fuse down there and then it turns on. Let me just show you real quick. Fuse on. And this is what we got. So this is with the camera settings adjusted. I just want to show you guys real quick. Because most of the install videos, it's kind of hard to see the pictures of it because they have their camera settings adjusted all wrong. So I pers purposely made my camera a little bit darker so you can actually see the details of when they're actually turned on. But I think they look pretty good. And then here's a kind of normal exposure, but uh, highlights are going to be all blown out, so it's going to be tough to see what they actually look like. But they look a lot better in person. You can actually see the details, and it's not just kind of like a blown out uh, look to it. It, it looks really, uh, really pretty good. Let's see if this does any justice. No. So yeah, I gotta just. See when I turn the camera settings down. So that's pretty much what it looks like to the eye and in person. So the final touch of the front end is I just need to get new grills because these are carbon fiber and they're a little bit sun faded, which is too bad. I could probably re-clear coat them, but I'm just gonna get some piano black ones just to make it look a little bit better. But uh, I'm going to just clean up this wiring a little bit and then uh, we should be good to go. And then one other thing I was testing out is I have this uh, yellow tint. And I actually did the headlights on my Corvette, but I did one of the fog lights down here. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so I did one of the fog lights and I think I'm actually going to do the other one too because the yellow looks kind of legit when they're... Off. Let me turn the fog lights on real quick. There we go. Yeah, so there's the yellow fog with the headlights. I think that looks pretty neat. Yeah, I like that. And there's the stock normal bulbs. So I know there was a bunch of install videos on this, so I wasn't really going to cover every single thing in detail, but I think the most important part is how to click, clip them onto the actual headlight assembly and make sure they don't fall off. I think in this form, they're pretty solid. And then with the inner bezel on there too, they're, uh, they're definitely not going anywhere. So you don't really need the tape, I don't think. But uh, yeah, I think that's gonna do it for today's episode. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I'll try to answer them with the wiring, but like I said, I didn't do the footwell light uh, fade in and out because I just don't like that. The way it works right now is if you turn the key off, uh, wait about, I think it's like 15 seconds, the, the halos are, will turn off by themselves anyways without fade effect. Um, I don't think that fade effect just suits the period of the car very well, so I'm just trying to keep things OEM-ish. So yeah, thanks for watching guys.